Hello and welcome to Architeasy. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a wall recess shelf in Revit. And if you ever wonder how you can make it and how you can control its material inside, the thickness of the frame and the, uh, if that thickness sticks out or not, like it's done here, or how to change material or have the different materials for the borders and for the back. That's exactly what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So let's go into Revit and let's see how we can make it. What you see right now is the Revit project file. We are going to need this later on, but how we can create this wall recessed shelf. And because it's wall recessed, I will just go to the family. And then the template I will be using to make this is going to be metric generic wall based. So just click OK. And then here, let's go to the placement side. First of all, I will just open our family types. Let's see, we have just default elevation. And then I'm going to create one reference plane. Here, I am then going to add dimension. And then let's select this dimension and let's assign parameter default elevation. And of course, I can just go and change this one to be 750, for example. So this is going to follow. Then I'm going to create a couple of more reference planes. So RP is the shortcut. I'm going to create one more for a height and then I'm going to create two more for the width. DI is the shortcut for line dimensions. I'm going to make it like this. First of all, the left one is for height. Then I'm going to assign equal constraint for this one. And this is going to be our width. So this is height, select this dimension, let's go and create parameter, type H for height, select this one, type W for the width, and let's see how it works. So I can just maybe make it to be 900 by 600. Yes, this seems well. So what I'm going to do next will be to create a couple of more reference planes, something like this. They're going to be inside those reference planes I created. So what I'm doing right now, I'm actually creating reference planes for our border material. And then I'm going to take dimension and then let's go from our borders to our inner reference planes. Select one of them and create parameter thickness. I'm going to name this as T. And of course, I will be just creating all of them as, uh, as instance parameters. We will see that later. So hold control, select those three dimensions, go here to the label and then assign thickness parameter. And I can just go here and I can make thickness to be, for example, 50 millimeters. Uh, height and width should be up, select width. Let's go up and let's hit OK. So you see that everything is fine here. And just before I move to the molding, I will now go to the plan view. And then here, I'm going to create two more reference planes. So I will make one here and I'm going to make one here. And then I'm going to name this one as Architeasy back. And then I'm going to name this one as Architeasy front. And I will also create one more reference plane here. And then from Architeasy back reference plane to that one, let's create one dimension and let's assign the, the label thickness. So this is OK. And I will do the same here. So let's hit tab. I need to go from this reference plane to this front reference plane. And I can just maybe uh, make this one as sticks out. Just like that. So I will just make this as instance. And by the way, you saw that some of parameters I made as a type, some as an instance. That's because of the workflow. If you make the thing like that, and if you would like to change it, you just need to go here. And then let's move this. So height width. Uh, you just need to select, for example, height. Go to the pencil, edit parameter, and then just simply hit instance and do the same for a width. So I'm going to create all our parameters as instance. Let's hit OK. So this is fine right now. So I like how this looks like. And let's start modeling. Creation of reference planes in your families is very important because I'm going to lock our geometry to the reference plane. So all the constraints are done to the reference planes. And then I'm going to lock geometry 
on the reference planes. So that's why I made them. So let's go to create. And first of all, I will just create a void form, void extrusion, because I need to have a cut for our wall. And I would like that extrusion to start from the Architeasy back reference plane, pick lines, and then just pick outer lines, actually pick outer reference planes and lock our lines. Of course, we need to have the closed loops, take trim tool, TR is a shortcut, trim it this way, and let's go to the reference plane. So here, what I can do, I can simply drag this to here, lock it, and let's go to 3D view. So nothing happens here. First of all, this is very important for you to know, select this void and then untick this cut geometry. That means that if we create any solid element in our family, it's not going to be cutted with this void. But why we need this void is to be able to cut that void from our wall, so it will create the wall niche, the wall shelf, but it will not affect other geometry which we are going to create inside this family. Then let's go to placement side and let's go to create. And in this case, I'm just going to create the extrusion. So I can just uh, take outer reference planes and repeat the process. So click lock and then take trim tool. And before I'm done, uh, I will go to reference plane. So you see that I created here thickness. So I mean, this reference plane, you could avoid creating. So I'm thinking exactly on this reference plane here. You can avoid creating it if you would like to, uh, let's say, have the same thickness as for the borders. But if you would like to have the different thickness, that's good to create it. And you can also assign the other parameter to it. In this case, because I'm going to use the same parameter, so I will just go here to associate family parameter for the extrusion end, and I will add thickness. I'm also able to skip that one, but as I said, if you would like to have a different value, you can just add different parameter. So we have this one. Let's go to our 3D for a family. You see how it looks like. And let's go to the placement side. And of course, I mean, it's pretty clear to you that you can also create this border as an extrusion. But let me show you how you can make this using the sweep tool. So let's go to sweep, sketch path, and then let's set the work plane. So in this case, I'm going to take Architeasy front, pick lines for our path, and then just lock it. And of course, trim. Confirm path. Let's go to the uh, to the plan view. And then here I need to go to edit profile. And I need to sketch my profile. And it's very important to also lock the profile to the reference planes I created and constrained before. So here I'm going to go to this back one. So that's why it could be very useful in this case and anyway i will not suggest you to to delete it you see that it's very useful to have it so let's hit ok let's go to 3d and you see how it looks like so what we can do is to select our back part let's go to material here associate family parameter and let's name this as material back let's make this as instance parameter as well and then let's select this border let's make this as material border also instance and now we can test how our family is going to work so let's make it to be for example one and a half meters in height let's make it to be 900 sticks out let's say 25 thickness 5 so everything works well. Uh, there is just one thing I didn't create here and we have to fix it. So I didn't make something which is called depth. You see that we cannot control depth. So I will just go here to this reference plane, go to the back one, and then I'm going to make depth parameter out of it. Let's call it as a D. 
hit instance, create it actually as instance, and let's see now if I, for example, change the depth, how it's going to work. So first of all, I can just make it to be 600. You see that it goes, let's make it 250, for example. So this seems well. And the name of this family is family one. I'm going to save it. This is the name of the family. Let's save it. And let's load this one into our project. So now, as you can see that I'm able to place it here and I'm going to place, for example, two of them. Let's go to our 3D. And then what I can do, for example, is because I have everything as instance, I can simply go to our dimensions. I can make or first of all, let's let's make the wall depth to be 300, for example. So let's make this one to have the depth of 100 millimeters. Then I would like to have the thickness of 25 sticks out, for example, zero. And let's make it 600, 600. So everything is fine. Also, I can select this one and I can make the different dimensions. And I can, of course, create a different elevation. And at the top of it, I can also assign them different materials. To do that, we just need to select your wall shelf, then go, for example, to material back. And let's say pick this marble 05. And by the way, let's go to texture so we can see it. And let's select it one more time and go to a material border and pick, for example, here marble 04. So you see, we got it. And by the way, let's say that for this wall, niche actually for this wall shelf we would like to have the same material everywhere i can take this granite 01 and then once i select it i don't need to go here to material editor i can simply select this one copy Control c Control v and then we have it and basically that was it for this tutorial so i really hope that now you know how you can create and use the wall based families in revit and of course, keep in mind that you can also uh, schedule all those information if you replace its uh, family parameters with the shared parameters. And if you would like to know more about shared parameters, how to create them, how to use them, about the best practices for it, just watch this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.